Hello everyone and welcome back to the DeHart House. My name is Alicia. I'm coming to you from Tacoma, Washington. And this is my video uh, podcast channel all about the crafty things that I like to do. So welcome if you're a new viewer. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. So it's mid-July. And I'm coming to you from the backyard. Marjorie has just started barking at something. <laughs> so it is mid-July. It's 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Um, and I really just really just wanted to be out on the back porch and also finding quiet time to podcast when, um, you know, everyone is home during this global pandemic is more challenging. So <laughs> I'm finding, finding some privacy on the back porch today. Anyway, um, yeah, so I apologize for my like super casual look, but it is mid-July. It's summer. It's hot outside. Um, the sun has now moved. It's in the afternoon, mid-afternoon, and so there's nice shade back here now without being too shaded. Um, I did want to show you how long my hair has been getting. <laughs> now, usually I grow my hair out and then just chop off like six inches or something. Um, that's not anything new with the pandemic going on. However, now I really want to go get my hair cut. Like it's to that length where I really want to go get my hair cut, but options are limited and I have a feeling options will become even more limited in the near future. I have pepperoni, which means I hold all the power. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so it's getting, it's getting really long and most days I just either uh, put it in a braid or tie it up in a bun just so it's, it's off the back of my neck and it's out of my face with the warm summer weather. I just, you know, want my hair up. <laughs> But anyway, this is not a podcast about hair. It's about crafty things. So let me get into what I've been working on this week. She's so cute. Okay. <laughs> so first off, I finished my scaffolding socks. Uh, they were in progress last week. I actually finished them, um, what, the day after I recorded last week's episode. Um, so they've been sitting on the blockers here. I had um, some really nice days to take photographs. And so the pattern is actually up and posted. It just went live on Ravelry before I sat down to record this episode, which is really fun. And as my neighbors drive by, I'm sure they're wondering what on earth I'm doing. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> You're so funny. You are so funny. Anyway, so this is my scaffolding socks project. So the idea is that on the outer sides of the leg uh, is this lace pattern. And that idea made me think of scaffolding up on the outside of a building as they're working on it or repainting or whatever it is they're doing. But, um, but the scaffolding is on the outside edges and the scaffolding in these socks is a very, um, actually quite simple lace pattern. And I think that looks really, sh really snazzy. Uh, so on the inside, um, inside of the leg, <laughs> there is no lace. It just shows up on the outside. So um, yeah, so I will pop the uh, pattern cover photo in here. 
which is the uh, photo you can look for on Ravelry is the, the first photo uh, featured for the pattern. And so these are scaffolding socks and they are available on Ravelry. So yeah, this pattern is up on Ravelry. It's two US dollars, um, which after taxes and fees, do I pay taxes? I think it depends on where you guys are when you buy them. Because I know there's the VAT, the V-A-T, um, for folks overseas in, I believe it is over in Europe, right? Pays the VAT tax. Um, I can't remember if there are other taxes, but anyway, after fees from Ravelry and whatnot, um, it's not like I make a lot of money off this. I just mostly like to do this for fun. Um, I really enjoy coming up with new patterns and designs and ideas, and it's just a nice way for my, um, nice outlet for my creativity. I didn't realize it was so windy out here. <laughs> anyway, so yay, I finished these socks. Um, I am participating in the Summer Stash Camp hosted in the Grace and Wool Ravelry group, which I have linked below in the description box. Um, the goal this month for July was to use up two skeins from your stash. So I did have two 50 gram skeins that I had purchased from Joann's. Uh, this is the Manny Petty. It's a, it's a lion brand yarn. The, this is a sock yarn, which is called Manny Petty. And this colorway is called Knee, K-N-E-E. -E. Uh, and I did get through the full repeat. After the, um, the gray and pink, it goes back up into the orange and pink. Um, orange and pink and then uh, red. And yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So if, if you purchase this colorway, um, do know that the, the stripe repeat is rather long. Um, in fact, one repeat got me a whole sock. <laughs> so, um, but I did not use up both balls for this pair of socks. Uh, I only used 70 grams. So I had 30 grams left over. I, I do wear a US size eight shoe and uh, my calves are big. <laughs> I do not have thin calves. And so uh, I don't like my socks to be too tall because this is really tight on my calf. Um, so I did knit tall socks just cause uh, I think they're really nice to have in the winter and for going hiking and things like that. Um, but I don't like my socks to be too tall because they're just uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, but they, they fit pretty nicely, although this is really tight on my legs. So maybe it'll stretch out. Maybe it won't. But I did use 70 grams to knit this pair of socks, which meant I had 30 grams left over that I needed to use up for summer stash camp in order to say I used two full skeins for the objective. So where was I? Interruption. I think Marjorie saw the neighbor cat and wanted to say hi. <laughs> um, good girl. So um, yeah, I needed to use up the last 30 grams of that sock yarn to do something. And I thought, why not try to make a headband out of it? I bet 30 grams is like the right amount for a headband, not a full hat. And I could try that. And it worked. It totally worked. <laughs> so I used up the remaining 30 grams to make this headband. Oh, Marjorie, you're being such a good girl. Yes. Good girl. You guys know how it is podcasting with others around. <laughs> um, so yeah, I use the same needles I use for the socks. So you size one needle. I cast on 30 stitches. So this is 30 stitches wide. And I just did garter stitch. And I did it straight for a while. 
as I was trying to figure out, first of all, if this was a good width, and second of all, how I was going to do this twisting thing. Um, so while I was knitting on this, I was trying to work out that puzzle in my brain. And I did have to go onto Pinterest and look at pictures for inspiration. Um, I didn't get any patterns or buy any patterns. I was just looking at the pictures like, this is something I like about knitting and crocheting and sewing is trying to figure out this puzzle. Like, I feel like I can figure this, how, how this works. I feel like I can figure it out. And I finally did. So I originally tried just doing a regular cable twist. So put the put the first half of stitches on a cable needle, go over and knit the second half, then from the cable needle, knit the first half. But it was so bunched up and it just looked awkward. It wasn't the look I was going for. I didn't want like a big um, bunchy spot on this headband. I wanted it to lay more flat like it is now. So what I did instead was, um, I split up the stitches in half, so maybe if I don't do the twisty part, but I said, okay, the first 15 stitches I'm going to knit in a column and then knit the second half in a column. So there'd be a hole in the middle, I just knit them separately. So I did have to knit, I knit this, the first half up a few rounds, rows, <laughs> cut the yarn, attach it over to the other half, knit them up the same number of rows then did the cable twist. Oh, amazing. So there is technically a hole in here because I knit the two uh, pieces here separately for a little bit, creating that hole in the middle. <laughs> so um, that's kind of neat, but it does allow this to lay more flat instead of being more bunched up. It just spreads out that twist. And so yeah, it uh, it fits. Marjorie, where are you going? Marjorie, come here. Good girl. Good girl. Another reason for having my hair up so I can show you. It fits. Um, I like it. I can do the, you know, pony on top. Um, I think this is just really nice way to use up some of that extra sock yarn so yeah 30 grams garter stitch took me a little while to figure out the twisty bit but I finally got there and I'm really happy with it so with these two projects combined uh, that used up both skeins of the Manny Petty yarn so that counts for summer stash camp um, for the month of July also stash dash, right? And then today, this morning, <laughs> so after I finished those projects, I decided I was going to work on a, one of my whips. And the whip I decided to work on was my Coopworth sweater, uh, which I have sitting over here. So this Coopworth sweater is something that I spun the yarn for and then picked out the pattern and started knitting it, right? And now it is officially off the needles. It's not finished, but it's off the needles. <laughs> so this pattern is Campside Cardi by Alicia Plummer. Marjorie, good girl. <sighs> this is tough. <laughs> uh, so Campside Cardi by Alicia Plummer, and it's done. It's done. Uh, last week I showed this to you guys. I had the body and one of the sleeves done. So I finished the other sleeve a couple days ago, and then this morning, I finished the collar. <sighs> yeah. So all the ends are still 
on here. They need to be woven in. I need to wash this and give it a good block. So I am not calling this finished yet. It will be finished once I do those things. But it did come off the needles this morning and I'm very, very happy with the result. I tried it on. It fits nicely even before blocking. So I think it'll fit really nicely after blocking as well. So I'm going to take some pictures um, just to show before and after blocking. Uh, I think this lace, the lacy bits here are just going to open up nicely after I block it instead of being kind of bunchy like this. And yeah, so it's, it's finished. I mean, I'm trying to show you guys Maybe I'll show you the back of it. Yeah, it's hard with the sunlight, but yeah, it's finished. So I did knit, um, what did I make? The second size or the third size? I'll have to look that up, but I did, I did modify the pattern a little bit. I did change needle sizes so I could get gauge. Um, I think I did one of the charts um, I might have done a few, a few more repeats or something to get a little bit more length. I did, I think I might have increased how much ribbing I did at the bottom. I also increased how much ribbing I did for the collar. Um, so <laughs> in next week's episode, when I show you my finished sweater, I will also talk about all those changes I made. But yeah, it's off the needles and I really excited. And for works in progress that aren't finished yet, <laughs> I did pick up my husband's socks. So I've already finished the first sock. Um, this is out of Patton's Croy in the Cascade colorway. And then the accents here are gray marl also Patton's Croy. So that was the first sock. And the second sock is getting there. <laughs> so um, yeah, I did pick this up again and started making, pro making progress on it. I think I have a couple more inches to go on the foot and then I'll be able to start the toe. So this is good uh, TV knitting, which is nice. So that's well on its way. Um, with these three things right here that I've finished, I just really want to cast on another project. So I will probably have something new to show you next week as well because, I mean, I finished three things. That's, that's really awesome um, and exciting. It makes me want to start something new. So, on a separate note, okay. So on a separate note, with my gardening progress, I did um, harvest my garlic on July fourth, and I let it sit out and dry for two weeks, and I cleaned it off and made a braid out of it. And so I wanted to show you my garlic braid. <laughs> It's so funny. So, first of all, I am a I am a new gardener, um, and I am renting this home and using the raised garden beds that were already here um, to grow food. And it's so much fun. It's something I've always wanted to do, and I definitely love it. Um, so this is my first attempt at growing garlic and I used garlic cloves from the grocery store um, from buying fresh garlic and then some of it would um, I'd have it for a while and the the cloves still left at the end had sprouted and I had um, looked up you know can I grow garlic out of that and so that's what I planted all of these came from garlic cloves that were in the kitchen that were in the kitchen too long that started sprouting and I went out and planted them and 
they weren't all planted at the same time, so some of the bulbs are, are much bigger than others. And I think that's because these went in like two, two months, one or two months after these went in the ground. Um, so there's definitely a difference there, but these bigger ones down at the bottom, I mean, they look like the size cloves that I originally bought at the store, which is awesome. I think I'm using the word cloves incorrectly. The whole garlic bulb looks like the size that I bought in the store. The cloves are the smaller bits inside. But yeah, I so I cleaned them up. I uh, used scissors and I cut off the roots and I tried to cut them as close to the bottom as I could without puncturing the skin here, the protective layers. And one of them, oh yeah, this one right here, I kind of ripped off some of the roots and the bottom of the garlic is showing through, which means I'll have to use that one up sooner than the others because um, I don't want moisture to get in there and then rot this or have it start growing. Um, but yeah, so I, I left it out to dry and let the stalks here get crumbly and brown and drying out and I had seen garlic braids like hanging in people's kitchens in TV shows and so then I looked up a video on how to make a garlic braid and I will link that video down below um, I thought it was really well done and easy to follow uh, and I did take video of myself making this braid this is the second attempt. The first one was really not awesome looking. <laughs> so this is attempt number two, which is much tighter and, and looks nicer. Um, I think it would look even better, right? If the bulbs were all bigger, obviously. Um, but since I went from big bulbs up to small bulbs, it um, you can see the braid through it and anyway so that's my garlic braid and it's really awesome I did cook with um, there were like five really small bulbs that um, the the top part here was just too fiddly to work with in the braid so I just trimmed those aside separately um, I made pasta one night uh, out of zucchini actually I made zucchini noodles and I, I used up those uh, small bulbs as a part of the seasoning for the pasta and it was really good so yay success in the garden I'm loving every minute of it so let me put in here the video of me trying to make a garlic braid Clean the garlic off and 
kind of got it separated into like little pieces of garlic that probably, maybe this one could be in the braid, but, uh, and then the bigger pieces that I think would be fine with me. Uh, and I'm going to try braiding up my garlic, but oh my gosh, it looks so good.
And yeah, so that was really fun. I'm just enjoying that whole process. I think it's helping to give me something else to be excited about. I get to get out of the house and learn how things grow and I'm not doing everything perfectly, but I am watching a lot of YouTube videos and reading a lot of articles online and um, I'm loving every minute of it. It's super fun. I love being outdoors and so it's just right up my alley. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's all I have to share with you this week. So um, I'm going to end this episode and then turn off the sprinkler in the yard. <laughs> and I will send you off with a video of Marjorie not playing in the sprinkler. And I will see you next time. So until then, happy crafting, whatever your craft may be. Stay safe, be well, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Marjorie, do you want to play in the sprinkler? Played in the garden hose already. Yeah? Okay. There's a sprinkler set up. Let's see what this is like. Look it! Look over there! Oh my gosh, she doesn't even notice it. Marjorie, look, there's water! Marjorie, leave it. Leave it. Look, there's water over here. Marjorie! Oh my gosh, this is not what I expected. Look at her, she's going around it. Hey! You don't want to play in the water? Aren't you a water dog? I want to play with my stick. <laughs> Seriously? Oh my gosh, what a silly girl. You don't want to play in the sprinkler? Ouch. Well, what on earth is happening? You would have been all over that five minutes ago. I put her stick on top of that shelf. It's sitting right there. So she is sitting right here, asking politely for it. And the sprinkler is just twirling over there, and she's not doing anything. <laughs> Marjorie, what's happening? I was watering the garden, and you had to get your face in the hose. <laughs>